Hello One Ps, we're back again for multiplying and dividing integers. Uh, our topic today is integers and our lesson goal, I know how to multiply and divide integers. This one's going to be pretty short and sweet, ladies and gentlemen, uh, because if you know how to multiply and divide positive numbers, you know how to multiply and divide integers. There's only one extra rule we're going to throw in there. Um, two negatives make a positive. That's our extra rule. So if you can pair up all the negatives, your total answer will be positive. In other words, if you have an odd number of negatives, you won't be able to pair them up. You can only pair up even things without having one left over. So your final answer will be negative. If you have an even number of negatives, they can all be paired up. Uh, so your final answer will be positive. So uh, I'm just going to highlight that if they're odd, um, you will have a negative answer. If you have an even number of negatives, there'll be a positive answer. So let's have a look at a few questions. Here's the questions we're going to work on. Uh, the first one, as you can see, there's two negatives. Two is an even number. And if we go back up here, even numbers mean our final answer is going to be positive. In other words, I can pair these up. I can put this negative here with this negative here, and since they're all paired off, my final answer is going to be positive. Now that I've made that determination, I can just do 3 times 2 is 6, and that's all there is to it. So looking over here, I have an odd number of negatives. I can't pair them up uh, because this negative doesn't have another negative to go with. So I know my final answer is going to be negative, and 2 times 4 is 8. Looking down here, I have an odd number of negatives again. This negative doesn't match any other negative. So my final answer has to be negative. And then 12 divided by 4 is 3. See how quickly we're going along there? Uh, the next one, I've got two negatives. That's an even number, which means my final answer is going to have to be positive. Or if you want to think about it in terms of pairing stuff up, this negative here matches up with this negative here, and I've got no negatives left over, so anytime two negatives go together, they make a positive, so my final answer is positive. And then I just have to know how many sixes are in 24. 24 divided by 6 is 4. Next question may be getting a little bit tougher here. Uh, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 negatives. 4 is an even number, and as we saw up here, even numbers can be all paired up, so we had a positive answer. So I know my final answer is going to be positive. Another way we could think about that is actually pairing them up and saying, okay, this negative and this negative are going to pair up and make a positive, and then this negative here and this negative here are going to pair up and make a positive, and then I have this positive, so everything here is positive, so my final answer has to be positive. And now I just need to do the multiplication of the whole numbers. 1 times 3 is 3, times 3 is 9, times 2 is 18, and 18 times 4 is uh, 72. Now looking over here, let's do this in two steps. I'm going to do the top and the bottom and then finish it off. So the top has an even number of negatives. So when I multiply the top, I have to get a positive answer. And then I do 2 times 10 is 20, times 3 is 60. And on the bottom, I have negative 4. Now when I look at that, I have a negative and a positive. I can't pair anything up. I have an odd number of negatives. So my final answer is going to have to be negative. And 60 divided by 4 is 15. So there's my final answer. Now looking at this one down here, I have one, two negatives, which can be put together. This negative can go with that negative, and there's nothing else, so we say that's positive. Or you can think of it as there's an even number of negatives, so my final answer is going to be positive. Either way, we can just go straight multiplying across there. Don't type the negatives into your calculator if you're using a calculator. That'll just get you confused. What you can do is just type it in straight from left to right with ignoring the negatives because we already know we're going to get a positive answer. So 5 times 2 is 10, times 1 is still 10, times 3 is 30, 
times 2 is 60 times 6 is 360. I don't expect you to do that in your head. Uh, just pick up a calculator and type it in, but don't type in those negatives. It makes it more difficult than it has to be. Uh, now over here, again, we're going to do this in two steps. I'm going to do the top, then I'm going to do the bottom, and then I'm going to do the division between them because that's what something over something else means. It means divide. So on the top, I know there's only one negative, so the top is going to be negative. And I have uh, 6 times 8 is 48, and then I have to multiply that by 2, and that gives me 96. So the top is negative 96, and the bottom, what do I have there? I've got an even number of negatives. They can be paired up to make positives. So since I have an even number of negatives, the bottom is going to be positive, and the final answer on the bottom there is 8, because 4 times 2 is 8. And now I need to do 96 divided by 8. 96 divided by 8 is 12, but is it going to be positive 12 or negative 12? Well, let's have a look here. I've got one of each. Nothing can be paired up. If I can't pair anything up, my final answer is going to be negative. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how to multiply and divide negative numbers. Just make sure that you think about what your final answer is going to be first, positive or negative, and then don't bother plugging positives and negatives into your calculator because you're just bound to make some mistakes. And so that's it for this lesson.